Hi there guys and welcome back to the shop. I'm Chris Bode. After a lot of deliberation and a lot of time, we are moving the Project Archie video series over here to the big channel because I want to share building a robot with a lot more people, with anybody who has a sincere and passionate desire to learn, which I hope might be some of you even. We've done the first series of videos on this last year and they went over on my personal channel, the, the behind the scenes channel, because it was a lot of me working stuff out and figuring out my path and figuring out what I wanted to do with my life. The series has grown considerably. It's become far more successful than I ever imagined. It turns out there's a lot of people out there that want to build a robot. And it's time to bring this series out to a larger audience. I'm not going to post the original 45 videos here. They're already on YouTube. If you check the link below in the description, it'll take you over to my personal channel. And if you want to build one of these robots, one of the amazing Anon Robotics AR3s, head on over there, step-by-step -step instructions for everything to get you up to this point. But from here on out, we're going to do it here on the big channel because my personal channel is behind the scenes. It's, it's a learning place. It's experimental and exploratory, and it's where I try new ideas. And, not all of them work, and that's okay, but if I'm going to fail in front of several hundred people, I'd like to not fail in front of several thousand people, and my personal channel only has like 7,000 subs. So if you want to see more of the behind the scenes and see inside the shop and all that jazz, head on over there and hang out. But from here on out, episode 45 onward, we're going to be building Project Archie, my iteration of an Anon AR3 robot, here, and we're going to share it with the world because that's my job. I wanna help you guys explore. So with that, let's pick up right where we left off six months ago, because we're back in production and it's time to have some fun and make some cool stuff and put it on the internet. So today, this is our robot as it stands currently. We've, we're all the way up to the third axis. We have the first axis down here, that does that. Axis two does this. And now we're building axis three, which is what this chain drive motor gearbox and all that is for so we need to we need to hang something out here so for this step you're going to need a few things because when we're done we're going to have something actually hanging on the end of that gearbox what we're going or the the end of the actuator what we're going to have is this so in your cnc kit you're looking for this part which is super reflective and freaks out the camera. So I'll try not and just sit it like that because the camera goes down like three stops every time I do. So there's your thing for the day. Learn about f-stops. If you can truly gain an understanding of f-stops, you're way smarter than I am because wow, that gets complicated. But this is the part we're going to need. This is our housing for the needle bearings. And then we have the needle bearings. So these are a pair of B is in Bravo 1616 needle bearings. They'll be identical. You can see they're actually marked Bravo 1616. So these are the delicate and important needle bearings. They will exactly fit. So, but they will fit, I promise. They really will fit. You may not believe me at first and don't experiment because it takes 47 minutes to get them back out without damaging them. Don't ask how I know that. Sometimes rehearsals aren't always the best idea when building something, especially things that have a bit of a press fit. So here's how you do. The insides of this part have a boss. That's a, a machine boss sticking out there. And basically what it, what it is is they drilled the hole and then they drilled a bigger hole, not quite all the way through. There's this center piece that's about a centimeter deep, okay? And if you flip it over, you'll see the same thing on the other side. So we have the bigger hole out here and then the smaller hole and that reliefed boss there. That's just a, a narrower part of the hole. But what it does is it gives you a stop. So this is really easy, but it's also easy to screw up. So on this particular step, take your time, chill, at no point in this process should you need a hammer. Just, no. This has to be clean on the outside. Make sure there's no 
dust, contaminants, sawdust, these have a light coating of oil, so they'll pick up anything they touch, but just make sure it's clean, both of them. Make sure the inside of this is totally clean. No sawdust or metal shavings or any of the other things you find just corrupting around in a shop. And if you've taken a while to get to this point, it's easy, especially for this, to be a bit of a dust magnet. When they're clean, just slide this right in there. Now, you won't think it fits at first, but just fingertip pressure, and the way I do it is put your fingers on there and roll it in like that. Okay, you don't have to get it all the way in, just get it started. Then, put it flat on the table, and don't like, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. This is slow and gentle pressure, but just check for airway, breathing, circulation. Remember, check, call, clear, and then it goes right in, almost. You'll end up with it a little bit above like that, and that's fine. So what we're gonna do is flip it over, and, and you wanna do the other step first because you're, you're made of meat and you are a soft, floppity bag of meat, which is much more gentle on things like this because that's gonna have, it's not an interference fit, but it's a press fit, kind of. It just barely fits. Then flip it over with the roller bearing down and send it all the way home. And then it'll be flush. And now everything's nice and flush and it perfectly fits. It won't go in any further because you're up against the machined stop in there. And then we flip it over and we do the exact same process again. So I'll show you this. You wanna get it aligned, get it all just tickety-boo and slide it in as far as you easily can with your hand. Now, you might get lucky. See, that one goes halfway in. We've only got about a centimeter sticking out, okay? And then set it flat on the table. And we're in. Flip it over and we're all the way in. And when it's done, you end up with that. Congratulations, you have now installed needle roller bearings into your J3 turret housing. See, when you use all the right terms, it sounds like we're doing real science over here. But that's it, you're in, it's good. You should have, you'll notice in there is a little bit of schmoo on the inside, that's okay. That's oil or grease or whatever came from the factory with, but you should have a, a little coating of lubricant in there. In our next video, now in this video, we're just trucking right on through. We're gonna put this on here, and for this, you're going to need a collection of screws. You'll need these four and these two. They look almost the same, but they are different. You'll notice these two have the countersunk flat head, and these are socket head cap screws. So an important thing to note these screws look very similar, but they're actually two different sizes. And we need to talk for a minute about how screws are sized. So the flathead screws are measured. These are supposed to be M4 by 14. So the first thing you do is you measure the diameter and you can see we've got about four millimeters. So that's an M4 screw. And then you measure the length and on the flathead screws, you measure the overall length, like I'm showing you there. And we can see this is 14 and change. So that's an M4 by 14 screw, okay? Now our other ones, we're still M4, but because this is a socket head cap screw, we measure it in a different way. You do not measure it over the overall length like that. That's not how we measure socket head cap screws. With these, we actually measure from the bottom this is tricky to hold, but we measure it from the bottom like that down to the end, okay? And we can see that we're at about 10. Okay, so this should be an M4 by 10 screw. Even though when you put them side by side, they're very similar, in reality, they're very different. So you're gonna need two M4 by 14 flat head screws and four M4 by 10 socket head cap screws. Remember that as we go along because it's really easy to get tripped up with that. So we've got our screws, we've got our turret housing. Now let's get our robot. So I'm gonna put the long part of the turret on the front pointing that way. And you can see we've got the holes 
are different as we go around. The four outer holes out here are square as you go down inside, like it's done with a flat end mill. And these, the middle holes, of which there's only two, are chamfered. So that tells us the flathead screws go in the middle holes and the socket head cap screws go in the outer holes. All right, as we do this, you're actually gonna need two different size Allen wrenches. You'll need a two and a half millimeter and a three millimeter. The two and a half millimeter is the one you'll need for the countersunk flathead screws. Now, let's talk for a minute about Bowden's boltment rule. Okay, we're doing a boltment, which is an assembly held together by bolts and technically screws in this case. We've got a lot of them to put in. We got half a dozen different screws to put in here. So when you're doing a boltment, uh, especially with socket head cap screws, it's pretty easy because they'll stay on there. Put that on the end of your tool, put it in a hole, go backwards until it clicks. You're actually going to go counterclockwise and you'll you'll hear and feel it make a tiny little click don't don't force anything but just the lightest of fingertip pressure and there's your click and then go forward and in doing that you won't cross thread it so we're going to go forward nice and easy but not all the way in we'll take it down till it just stops and then go back a turn and we're going to do this with all four of these on the outside i already did it with the two on the inside just go backwards till it clicks, and then forward till it stops, and then go back a turn, half a turn, just a little bit. Just back it off. Because what this does is, A, it'll help you prevent cross-threading them, which you really don't want to do, especially in aluminum. If you, it's super easy to cross-thread aluminum, especially with these little fine thread bolts. So the other thing it does, that's, that's why we go backwards until it clicks, so that we know we've got a nice clean engagement. And the reason that we back them off a little bit is to let everything wiggle just a little bit. This, this assembly will still wiggle. You can, you can see I can jiggle it around here. And that makes sure that if your tolerances are either too tight, or maybe a little too loose or whatever, depending on, because you, you aren't the guy that made this, which is good. It's probably done right. If I was the guy that made this, tolerances would be all over the damn place. But this gives you the opportunity to literally have wiggle room and get all the bolts in. If you put the first one in and tighten it right down, you're probably not gonna be able to get all the other ones in. So by doing a boltment like this, where everything goes in and then you back it out and you have that wiggle room, you can get everything just tickety-boo before you tighten it down. So because we have two flathead countersunk bolts on here, these, when they tighten down, are gonna very precisely locate the entire assembly. So I'm gonna tighten those first, and then I know this will be where it wants to be. Now these are the smaller ones, so we're gonna need two and a half millimeter, and just bring them down, just, just snug. You're not, you're not reefing this stuff down at all, just snug. And if you have more faith in your abilities than I have faith in mine, you can lock tight these together. I'm not doing that at this stage, I'm gonna build the entire robot without any Loctite so that I can go back and take things apart and change stuff around as I want. If you choose to Loctite these together, don't use red, use blue. Loctite is like super glue for mechanical fasteners. And blue, you can go back and change and replace and it'll come apart. It'll, it'll hold them in there nice and snug. It's vibration proof. It's what you use if you're building like quadcopters and stuff. Red is forever and requires fire to get it apart. So don't use red, especially with stuff like this. It's all light duty stuff, blue's fine. So with that, we're bolted together. That is all nice and snug and solid. And we can pick our robot up. And there you go. You have now, if you've been following along, installed your J3 turret housing on the end of the arm and we're we're all the way out to here it's cool and we're done with 45 episodes so thank you for hanging out on this one the entire purpose of this project is just to build a robot with regular home stuff 
Chris Annan designed and, and produced the AR3 robot kit. He also did the AR2, which is also awesome. The AR3, one step more skookum. It's pretty cool because this gives us a closed loop system. And he's done this amazing thing in sharing this with the world. Most robots get stupid expensive. Most robots, if you wanna have a kit this size from one of the big companies, you can spend 20 to $50,000 like it's nothing. This whole kit, you can build for just a few grand. For the, the price of a good used motorcycle, you can have a tabletop robot in your house and you'll learn a lot more lessons here. You'll learn a lot of lessons on a motorcycle too, but these are, these are more nerd lessons. This is your opportunity to completely assemble your own serious, real tabletop robot. And I'm a huge fan of the AR3 series. I've been a huge supporter of everything that Chris Annan's been doing. This guy's amazing and he's a bit of a hero of mine. So I'm very proud to have the opportunity to be able to build this robot and share it with you guys. Annan Robotics is not a sponsor of this series, either this year or last year. I paid for all the parts, just like you will. There's no special treatment here. So any of the comments that I give, I do not speak for Chris Annan, I speak for Chris Bowden. So my opinions are mine. And that's an important feature as we go through this. I'm gonna take you step by step through the entire process, but all of the opinions I express on this as I go are mine alone, okay? You guys have fun, show me what you've got. If you were following along on the first 44 episodes, come on over here, check this out, and post pictures in the comments or get in the Discord. The links are below in the description. And you can even join us on live while I shoot this. We're actually live streaming on this big screen up here. And you can follow along step by step through the entire process in real time. And now that I'm done with you guys, I'm gonna to talk to them because I got a really cool dude over in Korea who's got a ton of questions. You guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden, and as always, we'll see you next time.